Today on Real Chemistry, we're gonna talk about balancing chemical equations. First, I'm gonna introduce you to a chemical equation. What is it? And then we're gonna talk about how you balance them. So below you see a stovetop that's on and a flame's coming out of it. That flame turns out to come from the burning of natural gas. And a chemical equation that we can write down for the burning of natural gas is listed below. You take methane or natural gas and you combine it with oxygen. And when you mix those two things together, you get out a bunch of heat that we cook our food with, and you also get out carbon dioxide and water. So this combustion reaction is telling you what we're doing before and after. So we put in methane and oxygen, and we mix those things together and we burn them, and it spits out carbon dioxide and water. So that's basically what a chemical reaction is telling us. It's saying add these things together, we call those things we're adding together reactants, and it'll spit out this stuff and we call the things that it spits out products. And it's important to notice that in a chemical reaction, all that's happening is atoms are being shuffled around and paired up with different atoms. So before, in the reactants, we see that hydrogen is paired with carbon. And afterwards, we see that hydrogen's paired with oxygen. And so the atoms can shuffle around, but they can't change in number. We should always have the same number of hydrogens before and after. And that's because mass is not created or destroyed in a chemical reaction. If it were, that would break the law of conservation of mass. So balancing chemical equations, which is what we're gonna do in this video, is using big numbers that you write in front of the chemical species in our reaction to make sure that the number of each atom type balances on both sides. If you're a little confused by what I mean there, that's okay, we're gonna do a few examples. But if we just look at this reaction, we can see that methane has four hydrogens. So we have four hydrogens at the beginning, and we only have two at the end. So what we might do here to balance that is we might put a number in front of water. And it's really important that we never, ever, ever change those subscripts, those little numbers. If you change those subscripts, you're changing what the molecule is. If I change H2O to H4O, it's not water anymore. So you never, ever touch those subscripts. Instead, what we do is put a number in front of water, like a two. And now if I have two waters, that means I have four hydrogen atoms. So when I write that two, what that's telling me is before I had one water, and now that I wrote the two there, I actually have a second water. And so that second water contributes another two hydrogens. And that's how we can bring our chemical equations into balance, using coefficients like this up front. And it takes some guessing and some checking to figure out what coefficients we should write so that our equations are balanced. So let's go ahead and balance this equation. Here's some steps that I've written down. First, you want to count the atoms of each type before and after, or in the products and the reactants. And then you want to change the number in front of those molecules, and then just recount the atoms. And you want to do that until you find out that the number of atoms of each type before and after are the same. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and write before right here. And then I'm going to look at all the different types of atoms we have. We have carbon. We have hydrogen and we have oxygen. So I'm gonna write down C, H, and O. And I'm just gonna count up how many of each of those we have. And if we look, we see that we have one carbon because there's just an implied one there. So I'm gonna write a one next to my carbon. We see that we have four hydrogens. So I'm gonna write a four next to my hydrogen. And we see that we have two oxygens. So I'm gonna write a two down next to that oxygen. If you're curious, these little G's here that you see tell us about the phase of those molecules. So those are in the gas phase. G stands for gas phase. And a full and complete chemical information, a full and complete chemical equation will always specify the phase. Okay, so now we've listed what we have before and after, or before. We have one carbon, four hydrogen, and two oxygens. And now we're gonna do the same thing for after. We're just gonna count up what we have of each type. And we still have carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. And the chemical species we have before and after should always be the same. So we are always gonna have carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen afterwards if we had carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen beforehand. And now we wanna count them up. So we see we have one carbon, and we see that we have two oxygens here and one oxygen there. So that gives us a total of three oxygens. 
And then we have two hydrogens in our water. So we have two hydrogens. All right, now we've counted up all the atoms we have before and after. And we can see that some of them don't match. Our carbons match, but our hydrogens don't. And neither do our oxygens. And so what we're going to do now is we're going to write big numbers, coefficients, in front of our compounds to try to start bringing these into balance. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say, hey, look, carbon, or hydrogen, I'm sorry, has two here, but it has four there. And so if I want to bring those into balance, then I can put a two in front of my water. And why, why does that bring it into balance? Well, that's going to multiply the number of hydrogens I have afterwards by two. It's also going to increase the amount of oxygen I have. So now what I want to do is I want to go through and recount the number of atoms I have after the chemical reaction. So I still have one carbon. Nothing changed there. My hydrogen, however, now has changed because there's two hydrogens in each water molecule. And now I have two water molecules, giving me a total of four hydrogens. So I'm going to cross out that two, and I'm now going to write a four. Also, the number of oxygens I have has changed. I have two oxygens from my carbon dioxide. And I have one oxygen from each of my waters. And I have a total of two waters. So that means two oxygens from over here and two oxygens for over here for a total of four oxygens now. I'm going to erase those strokes so we don't get lost in how much information is written. So I no longer have three oxygens. Now I have four. And now if I compare my numbers, we see that still carbon is the same. Carbon beforehand is one, check. And carbon afterwards is one, check. Now our hydrogens also match. Four, check. And four, check. Our oxygens don't match. So how can we make those oxygen match? Well, I'm going to go over to the reactant side, the before side. And if I put a two in front of this oxygen, then I'll double how much oxygen I have beforehand. And so now I can cross out my two and write a four here. Because now I have two oxygen molecules with two oxygen atoms each. So one way to kind of easily visualize what's going on here is if I draw them both out. I have one oxygen molecule, I have two oxygen molecules. And I can see that if I count up the total number of atoms I have there, I actually have four oxygen atoms. And so that's why I get this four down here. That's what this two is doing. It's not changing the oxygen molecule. It's still O2, just two oxygens in it. Instead, it's saying that when I run my reaction, when I when I burn methane, I'm going to take methane, I'm just going to take one methane, and I'm going to combine it with two oxygens now. And what I'm going to get out is one carbon dioxide and two waters. So those big coefficients up front are not changing um, the chemical compound, but instead just changing how many of those compounds I have before and after. All right. So now that chemical equation is balanced. We can see that I now have the same number of oxygens on both sides. And so that's balanced because we have the same number of atoms of each type before and after. So let's go ahead and do another example. So here I have a reaction that looks a little more complicated. I see that I think I take this iron sulfate thing right here and I combine it with what uh, with potassium hydroxide. I get out potassium sulfate and iron hydroxide. So a somewhat more complicated chemical reaction. And we're going to want to do the same thing here. Now, one tip is that when you see polyatomic ions throughout your equation, so sulfate is a polyatomic ion, hydroxide is a polyatomic ion, sulfate's over here, and hydroxide's over here, you can balance those as chunks. Basically, you can say, okay, I'm just going to balance the number of sulfates, and I'm not going to worry about the fact that there's one sulfur and four oxygens in each sulfate. I'm just going to make sure that I have the same number of sulfates before and after. And that just simplifies the balancing procedure. So when I write down my before and after here, I'm not going to write down all the different individual elements. I'm going to write down the individual elements or the polyatomic ions that I have. So the first thing I notice I have before is iron, Fe. And then the next thing I see is sulfate. So I'm just going to write down SO4 in my before list. And that's a nice way to keep track 
of how many sulfates I have because I don't have to every single time do this math to calculate how many sulfurs and oxygens I have. Then I notice I also have potassium and I also have hydroxides or OH. If you want to know how do I recognize the polyatomic ions? Well, the basic way to do that is to memorize the polyatomic ion list and that's required in most chemistry courses. So potassium and then hydroxides. That's my before and then in my after. I'm going to have the same thing. I have potassium, sulf sulfate groups, iron, and hydroxide. And I'm just going to write them in the same order because that keeps it a little easier to compare the numbers that I have of each. And now what we're going to do is we're going to try to balance the numbers of each of these on both sides. And first thing is, the first thing we're going to do is count how many of each type of thing we have on the before and after side. So we'll notice that we have two iron before, so I'm going to write a two here. We'll notice that we have sulfate groups and we have how many of them? Three. So we have three sulfates. So I'm going to put a three by our sulfates. We have one potassium and one hydroxide because there's no subscripts and that KaOH and that means those are just all implied ones. On the right hand side, we have one iron to begin with. We have one sulfate group. We have two potassiums because there's this two by this K here. And then we have three hydroxides. All right, so now we've counted up before and after. I'm just going to erase any notation we have on our chemical equation to keep it a little clear. And now what we're going to do is we're going to try to bring those compounds into balance. And the first thing you'll notice is that our iron at the top of the list, we have two beforehand and only one afterwards. So I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to use a two in front of iron hydroxide to bring those irons into balance. So I'm going to put a two here. And that means that now I have to recount how many things I have on the after side. And now instead of having one iron, I have two, which is good news because that makes it match. I still have the same number of sulfates and the same number of potassiums. However, my hydroxides, which I have three of in each iron hydroxide, and I have two iron hydroxides, so that gives me a total of six hydroxide groups. So I used to have three, but I doubled that, so now I have six. All right, and now you'll notice that my iron matches. My sulfates, however, don't match. I have three on the left-hand side and one on the right-hand side. So in order to bring those into balance, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and put a three in front of K2SO4. And that's gonna give me three sulfates. Since each K2SO4 has one sulfate, when I put a three in front of it, it's gonna give me three sulfates. And now I need to recount what I have before and after. So I now have three sulfates afterwards, which is good. That makes that match. And now instead of having two potassiums, I have six because I have three potassium sulfates and each potassium sulfate has two potassiums in it. So I get rid of that two and now I have six potassiums over here. So now we notice that our twos match on both sides and our threes match on both sides, but our potassium hydroxides there's only one potassium and one hydroxide there, and there's six on the other side. So how can we bring those into balance? Well, if I put a six in front of my potassium hydroxide, that's gonna give me six potassiums and actually six hydroxides, which is exactly what we need. So now I'm gonna recount what I have on my before side. Still two iron and three sulfate. I get rid of my one potassium, and now I have six instead, because I have six potassium hydroxides, and each potassium hydroxide has one potassium in it. Similarly, I used to have one hydroxide and now I have six. So that means now we're in balance because I have six potassiums on the left side, six potassiums on the right, six hydroxides on the left and six on the right. So we're balanced. So that's our final answer up here. We combine one iron sulfate with six potassium hydroxides and we'll get out three potassium sulfates and two iron hydroxides. So you're done, that's your final equation. And now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna review the tips that I have listed here. 
So first of all, you never want to change the subscripts ever. That'll change your compound. Secondly, if you see any elements by themselves, like you just have aluminum or you just have oxygen, leave those till last. If you get stuck, make sure you double check how many of elements you have on each side. It's very easy to make a math error here early on in the balancing of a chemical equation. And sometimes you can even make it impossible to balance a chemical equation. So always double check how many elements you have on each side if you feel stuck. Finally, remember, just like we did here, balance those polyatomic ions as single things, as chunks. Thanks for watching this episode of Real Chemistry. If you have any questions, please leave them below.